Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Xbox 360 emulator on PC. Xenia, let's get started. All right, to kick things off, over the years, Xenia has gotten better and better and better at emulating Xbox 360 games. While it's still far from perfect, they have made some really big strides here. Now you will need a fairly powerful PC in order to emulate Xbox 360 games well. Now to get started with this emulator, head over to xenia.jp. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once you're here, click on the downloads link and that'll bring you to the main downloads page. From here, feel free to click on system requirements in order to understand exactly what you need to run this emulator. Or you can just live on the wild side here and directly download the emulator by clicking on master. The emulator size is 16.1 megabytes. It's not very big. Now, before I go any further here, just as an FYI, there are two different versions of Xenia, Master and Canary. Now, Canary is the development or experimental version of Xenia, and Master is the main version, the one we just checked out. Sometimes games work better in Canary, sometimes games work better in Master. It all depends on the game and your setup, but I do recommend downloading both files here. So to download the Canary files, click on System Requirements, scroll down the page to where it says Canary, and click on it. The file size is a whopping 3.1 megabytes. Once you've downloaded everything, go on ahead and extract the Xenia master files into its own folder. So I've created a folder called Xenia, and I'm just placing the files in here. The next step is to create a file called portable.txt. To do this is very simple and straightforward. Just right click in the file here, go to new and then click text document, then call it portable. And what this does is it deals with your saves, which you may or may not need to touch later on. It's just an easier step. Once that's done, open up and close Xenia. So just double click Xenia to open it up. Once it's open, go on ahead and close it. From here, that'll create some extra files in this folder. One of the downfalls of Xenia is that it doesn't have a GUI in order to change up options. For example, if you wanted to increase your resolution, you can't do that inside the emulator. You have to do that in text format in the config file. And this is a bit of a pain, especially if you spell something wrong. So just be careful in this next part. If you do screw something up, you can always delete these files and re-extract them, and then you should be good to go. The next step here is to open up xenia.config.toml, and we'll want to open it up with Notepad. So right click, go to Open With, go to More Apps here, and then click on Notepad. And from this, you should have something that looks like this. On the left side of the page, we have the options that we can change, and we can change anything after the equal sign. On the right side of the page, we have the description of the options we are changing. Again, be careful here because you can really screw up your emulator. If you're feeling a little bit uneasy about this, feel free to create a copy of this config file before you make any changes, and that way you've got a backup if you screw something up. In the CPU settings, I don't really recommend changing anything at all. Just scroll down the page a little bit here where it says license mask equals zero. If you're playing disc-based Xbox 360 games, then leave it at zero. If you change it to one, this is for your Xbox Live games. So if you're playing an Xbox Live games, feel free to change this to one. As for the next settings to change, these ones are completely optional and will completely depend on your setup. Some of these options are better for Nvidia cards, some are better for AMD cards, and some are better for Intel cards. Now, I don't necessarily recommend changing anything until you've tried out a game. If you're running into issues playing your game, that's when you start tweaking. So try out a game first, but if you do want to bump up your graphics, go to Draw Resolution Scale, and you can change this from 1 to 2. So 1 is the native resolution for the Xbox 360. Two, well, two doubles that resolution. It bumps things up considerably. Where it says GPU Any, if you're running into significant issues trying to run a game, you can try to force it to use a specific GPU. So by default, it's set to GPU Any, but you can type in Any or D3D12 or Vulkan or even Null. If you use Null, you're probably not gonna get much of anything. Vulkan is not as developed as Direct3D12 and if you're running into issues and you have an AMD card, you can always type Vulkan in here and see if that works for you. And if you're curious about the Vulkan settings, scroll down to the very bottom and that's where they're now hidden. Well, they're not really hidden, they're right here in plain sight. 
so you can change the Vulkan settings if you want. But again, I don't recommend changing any of this. I don't recommend tinkering around at all until you've run a game. If you're running into issues, feel free to experiment here. These things will change. These options will change depending on your setup, depending on your graphics card, your PC. There are a lot of variables here. One setting isn't probably going to be great for everybody. But from here, feel free to close out of this and open up Xenia. Before we start up a game here, I forgot to talk about controllers. Xenia works best with X input controllers. Whether it's an official branded or off-branded Xbox 360, Xbox One, or Xbox Series X controller, those controllers all work fine. In fact, for this video, I'm using an 8-bit Doe Pro 2. It registers as an X input device on my PC and it works without issue. To load up your game, just click File, Open, and find your ISO. So you can see here, I have Virtua Fighter up and running and it looks to be running absolutely fine. Again, your performance may vary based on the PC you have. Xbox 360 emulation is not easy on a lot of computers. Other than that, that's really about it. There's not much else I need to do. If you're running into some performance issues, you can go into that config file, change a few things, maybe try turning VSync off or something, and see if that actually helps. Otherwise, you can try out Canary. To try out Canary, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Just extract the files that you downloaded. From here, just open up Canary, boot up your game, and you should be good to go. There is no guarantee that Canary will run better than the master version of Xenia, but there is a chance it might. It's an experimental version. It gets updated quite frequently, so just try it out and see if it works. Now, just a friendly reminder here, Xenia is still under development. It's been under development for a while, they have made some significant strides, but they still have a ways to go. There are some things missing from this emulator. Things will change in the future. If anything major changes, I'll be sure to update this video. As for now, just enjoy it for what it is. You don't need a separate BIOS. It does run a lot of different games. It might not run your games perfectly. It might not work very well on your device just yet but that stuff will improve in time. And what we have here is actually really impressive. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Just a short and sweet video that should hopefully get you up and running in some way, shape or form. If Xenia is not working for you, just be patient because I'm certain things will get better in the future. Let me know your thoughts about Xenia in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.